Hello Helix users. Today I want to show you guys how I've been using my stock cabs, how I've been getting them to sound just as good as IRs, and basically how I go about making a preset from scratch in the HX Stomp. I'll keep it simple. It'll be, you can do this in your Helix. Obviously it doesn't matter. Everything's cross compatible, but this is just a quick kind of dialing in of how I make something. You know, if I'm making a preset, this is literally my exact process but I want you to pay close attention to what I'm doing with the cabinets and how to get them to sound really good. So let's go over to HX Edit and get started. I'll be using my 68 Tele, just going straight into the HX Stump, USB interface direct into my DAW. And before we move on, if you guys would be so kind, please subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in more Helix stuff, leave me a comment below, ask questions, whatever you wanna do, I will get back to your comments. I answer every single one and I would appreciate the support. So thank you guys for watching and let's go over to HX Edit and get into it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a amp, not an amp and cab, an amp. Let's go with the Matchstick Channel 2. This is my probably my favorite amp in the Helix. Slide that over one. So now when I go to my cabinet selection, I always use a dual cab so for the matchstick, let's let's make it easy. Let's go with the G25. And for the other one, I'm going to go, yeah, let's just keep it simple. So I'm going to do two of the same cabinet just for simplicity's sake. So the benefit of doing the two dual cabs instead of just the one is that you're, you have the ability to blend microphones. So... What you really want, you're gonna want each of those to fill in the gaps that the other has. So I usually like to make one more brighter sound, a more harsh mid-range, and I like the other one to be a softer, more low-end sound that's a little bit more muffled so that they come together and make a great sounding cabinet together or a great sounding system, whatever you wanna call it. So let's go back over. So on this one, I'm just gonna keep it simple. Let's go 57 right on it. I'm going to bring the high cut down to 6K. Low cut I can leave alone, no early reflections. So this is basically, I'm just taking the 57, shoving it right on the mic, uh, shoving the mic right on the cabinet, just going right to it. Now the second cabinet choice is going to be something that, um, it's going to be something that's darker and I'm going to have it a little bit further away. So you should at some point in your Helix journey, Take a walk through all of these mics and listen to what they sound like. I know it sounds like a lot. It sounds like it's going to be a really annoying task, but really it's worth it because if you're going to be making your own presets at home, it's just worth having the knowledge and remembering what they sound like. Maybe take out a notepad, just make notes for what you like and what you don't like. I'm at the point now where I know exactly where I'm going to go with this, but I didn't just wake up that way. You know, I took some time. I experimented. Using pedal edit mode is really good, so you could play along while you adjust these and hear different things. You could also put the looper in the front. I have a whole playlist of tips. If you look at my two-minute tip videos, I have one where I use a looper and one um, where I'm using pedal edit mode. Those are so good for this type of thing where you're figuring out which microphones you like. So check out those videos if you haven't. They're on the channel. So the other microphone I'm going to pick here is the 4038. I'm going to back it up all the way. I'm going to keep the high cut off, low cut I'm going to keep the same. And I'm going to bring the early reflections up to 35. Sure, sounds fine to me. And let's hear what this sounds like. That's not a bad sound to start off with and I haven't even touched the amp settings yet. So. What you could do now in this dual menu here, where you're going back and forth, is you can blend the two, um, blend the cabinets how you want. So you can kind of level match them the way you want. So I usually like to take the 57, just bring it down a couple of dB, let's say two and a half. Turn the volume on, helps a lot. I'm now in the middle position on the telly. And now you might like that sound. I think it sounds 
usable. It's fine to get started with something, but you'll notice there's something weird. If you're listening in stereo, especially when the Helix does this, it makes these a stereo thing where you're hearing them differently in, in your different ears. So what I always like to do is go over here to an EQ. I've been liking the parametric EQ block. If you guys haven't seen any of Richie Castellano's videos, he always advocates for the parametric after. Also, you know, the Jason Sedites thing of having the compressor at the end. All great things, but I'm going to go with the parametric for right now because that's what I've been messing with. And now, before I even do anything, let's hear the difference. <laughs> So what the EQ does is that it sums it to mono and it basically brings that sound from all the way out here and just puts it together for you. Let's hear without it. This will be more apparent if you guys have headphones in or, you know, studio headphones, anything that you're listening to in stereo, you will hear that difference in. Pending that this bounces down into stereo. I hope it does after I just said all that. Anyway, so the areas that I like to look for here, definitely high cut. You could definitely bring this down. Let's say, let's bring it to eight just for fun here. And with the low cut, how I dial in low cut, I'll kind of put on the neck pickup. I'll turn the volume up and... And I'll literally wiggle it around, and you could hear what it's doing to the sound. And that rhymes. That's a good song, I guess. You could hear what it does to this. What to, what it does to the tone. And you can find it. Find your sweet spot. Sounds fine to me. And now I'm gonna go to the bridge pickup and try to get this to sound a little harsh. So a little EQ 101, um, if you're not familiar with EQs, I know that this can be a stressful topic, something that I didn't know about for a really long time. And again, it just takes a lot of, a lot of experimenting and a lot of messing around with. I also have a two minute tip about that if you happen to check that out. But I find that the harsh frequencies, when you know people say that the harsh high end and stuff that's you know sounding just not pleasant to your ear, that's harsh and ice picky, that frequency is usually in the mid frequency, and it's between three and five k ish. So let's say three point seven is where I'm gonna just aim for for right now. And I'm going to put my headphones on to really find the spot. So I'm going to put my studio cans on so I can really hear this. So I have this frequency here. I'm going to bring the Q up and I'm going to jack this up more. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did with the low end, but I'm going to do that with the mid frequency. So I'm getting some overtone happening around four seven. So now I'm just gonna take this, and I'm gonna duck it about three dB. All 
right, so that's kind of like a good basic of where I would start, okay? So from here, I would go into my amp settings and I would just do probably where everybody else starts. So if you're, if you've been making presets and you don't, and you're not happy with how you're going about it, this is probably where you start. So that's just all the preliminary steps that I take before I even go into looking for amp settings. So let's just mess around here. Um, the cut and presence, if they're not on the real amp, they're not on my modeled amp. So I don't do that. Um, I'm going to bring the sag down a little bit. I'm not particularly fond of sag and I'm going to bring my biases up. That just makes the tubes a little hotter. double check with my headphones. I'm monitoring through the power cab on the floor. I have the 212 power cab across the room for me. But let's just make sure. We're still a little harsh in the ears. So I'm going to take this down about 6k. That's pretty good. I think I can use a little bit more high cut off of that 57. And that all comes from, from trial and error, you know, messing with things as you keep dialing things in, figuring out what you like and what you don't like. I'm a big high cut guy. I think it's just easier to just cut them out. So I like it in the cab block. I would do it on the harsher microphone. So the 57 is a harsher microphone. Like I said, the 4038 is my uh, my soft mic. So if I just go to this, bring this all the way down, and you hear just the 4038, you hear it's a lot less harsh. Let's bring this all the way up now. Whatever, close enough. Bring this one all the way down. And this is just the 57. You could hear how they kind of work against each other, but really they work with each other because one is more harsh, one is more of like the pillow around it. So I could bring this back up. The 4038, I'll keep it zero. And I'm just going to dial back that 57 just a little bit. Give me a nice round, even sound. that's pretty decent to start so let's add a slapback since I like slapback and you should too um, yeah whatever um, let's just throw I want to go vintage digital I like the high sample rate I'm gonna keep this at 12 bit take you down Sure, that's fine. Feedback's gonna go all the way down, so we just get the one slap back. Let's see what we're at. Way too much mix. Perfect. So that gives you nice a nice little room sound, right? Well, 
Works for me. Now, reverb. I don't like any of these, the new ones. I'm a big fan of the legacy reverbs. Um, since I guess it's a room sound with the slapback, let's change this. And let's do a little bit of a plate. This is a little bit out there. I like pre-delay. Pre-delay basically means you could let a little bit of the transient note pop through before the decay happens. I usually like around 80. High cut, you're pointless to me in this. I don't need it. Works for me. Front end, what type of overdrive do we want here? This is a good time for you guys to let me know what your favorite overdrive is in the Helix. Let me know which of these you would pick for this tone. I am going to... I do like Diana drive. Yeah, give me some of that noise. Again, I and I've been doing this so much, like I mess with these so much that I kind of have an idea of where I like these settings. This I like here. It's gonna need a little high end. Make sure I'm not boosting too much volume wise. Sounds pretty good to me. So from here, I would take this into a rehearsal. I would take this into a gig if I'm able to adjust on the fly. If I have a formal sound check where I can plug this in and all of a sudden through the PA it sounds like total crap, which is possible, then I would immediately go and try to adjust that either in the parametric, find that harsh frequency and cut it out, or if I'm in a pinch, just high cut it until the harshness goes away and then you figure it out later reset the process. So I would definitely take this straight to a rehearsal, crank it up, get it nice and loud, hear what it sounds like with the Fletcher Munson curve, whatever, you know, that just means basically as it gets louder, the high end gets more harsh, the low end gets boomier. But really for me with the Helix, the high end could just get a little harsh sometimes live. So just be careful with that. And I will upload this to custom tone and you guys can have this tone for free. And if you like it, use it. Let me know what you think of it. Download it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And yeah, I hope you guys like this tone. This is how I go about making a tone from scratch.